Hey everybody, Mike Cipperini here from Chippers Island Adventures and today's video is on RV newbie essential items. I'm going to go over some items that I feel are totally essential for your first night or your first trip on your new RV. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Today's video is all about the RV newbie essentials and that is the essential items that you actually have to have in order to use your RV for the first night or the first week or whatever. When I was purchasing my RV last year for the entire winter I watched YouTube video after YouTube video and a lot of them dealt with what I would need in order to use my RV and then I went down to Ocala Florida and picked it up and right when I gra uh, purchased my RV I went ahead and took a ride out to a campus world along with a Home Depot and a couple other stores in order to get essential items and these items are essential so let's start off with the first one so the first item and by the way as we go over these items we're gonna, some of them are gonna be more in groups. So what I'm going to do is work from the back of my rig to the front, and then we'll go inside. But the first item is the septic hose. And as you can see, this is a Rhino hose. Now, what I did is I bought a kit that had, I believe, 20 foot of hose along with a couple adapters and the elbow the see-through elbow so you can see the stuff going into the dump tank and the thing is I got the Rhino because I use my bumper storage and my on the 24B and all the Odyssey series they give you a bumper storage and this as you can see as you can see it doesn't quite fit but if you turn it it goes in now I was talking to a guy the other day and he had a 26 D and his 26 D the septic hose that he had was green as opposed to orange so I don't know the brand but he told me he could not get it into his bumper so it's something to think about if you have a bump of storage. And speaking of septic, you're gonna have your hose, you can store it in here, get some latex gloves. Get a whole box at any big box store, Home Depot or whatever, you can get a box of latex gloves, disposable ones that you can peel off and throw them away. The other thing, make sure you get your fittings. And what I do, is I keep all my septic stuff in one in one container and this here is actually even though it's colored blue is actually my black tank flush so I'll connect this up to my black tank flush and flush out my black tank when I dump it the reason why I use a blue hose is because this blue hose which I was going to use for my water supply wouldn't fit my filter I don't know why it fits here just fine but it wouldn't fit my filter so I just went ahead and re uh, reassigned it to my black hose black tank hose the second group I want to talk about is the water supply you're gonna need one a hose and I like these um, these flexible hoses they pack up nice and uh, fit right into a small bag. You're going to need a water filter. And what I have here is a two-part water filter. A lot of people like to get the one part, which is generally comes in blue, and it's just this part. But I have a two-part water filter. And then I have this piece of flex tubing because I find it a lot easier to work with. And then I also have this 45 degree elbow or uh, 90 degree elbow. They have 45 degree too, so it sticks out instead of being 
a straight 90 it kind of sticks out a little bit more and I like those as well and the other thing you're going to want for your water supply is a pressure regulator now this is my pressure regulator it goes what I do is I put a little Y on it and I hook it up to the water supply at the campground and that way there I can use this side for whatever water usage I want even if it's the black tank fill flush and then I have this that I connect the other end of this hose to at the water supply so that's a few things in one that are truly essential one the water hose two the filter and three the pressure regulator that's at a minimum do not put a water hose on your rig without a filter on it or without a pressure regulator the, your hose is most of the rig piping is just PEX tubing you can blow that out with high pressure and this will keep it around 40 or 50 you know 40 to 50 pounds so that's a good good pressure to have and the other thing is I keep a 45 in here for my black tank flush right in this little compartment then I don't lose it it's always there and it works out pretty nice what I tend to do is I keep everything the pressure regulator the little hose adapter along with my hose and filter in one bag and that way there everything is in one place and all I have to do is pull it out of the compartment and I'm ready to go go Patriots and I keep everything in one compartment which is right here this is my I call it my if it flows it goes and by the way, if you like my videos, please hit subscribe and the like button. Every time you hit that like button, it helps me generate more views with YouTube. Hitting subscribe, of course, more subscribers, the better. So hit the subscribe and hit the like button. And that way there, YouTube's happy, I'm happy. But at any rate, this brings me back to my third group. So we've had septic. We've had water, but we need another thing, and that's power. When you hook up your power, you're going to want a surge protector. Now, I have two. I really like the power watchdog, but my power watchdog died, and they, the Hughes Corporation sent me a new one. But while that died, I got this Progressive Industries, and I like this as well. So I have two of them. And I'm a 30 amp service. Definitely have one of these because you do not want to go to a campground. Some of these campgrounds have sketchy power supplies. You do not want to go to a campground, plug in your very expensive rig and have them fry your electronics. You don't want that to happen. So these are good to have. And I truly believe it's an essential item to have a surge protector. And another thing you might want to consider is an adapter. Because that way there, and I again, I have two of these. That way there, when you are at your home base, if you don't have a 30 amp or 50 amp service on your home yet, you can always power up your rig with the adapter. This is just another one. I have two of them. So that that is a good thing to have. The only the only problem with that, you really can't run your AC. And your uh, and I think, though I've never tried your microwave, but you might get away with the microwave, but you're definitely not running your AC. Not on my house, we're not. So the next item is blocks and chocks. When I first got my rig, I picked up these four. And these have been great. And they come apart one at a time. And what I do is I put these under my jacks. So no matter what the ground is, I always have something under my jacks. The problem is 
one per jack was not enough. So I truly recommend getting this stack. This has saved me quite a few times because you get to campgrounds at, the ground's a little uneven, and now you can put a fair amount underneath your blocks or uh, your jacks. So it's good to have the whole stack. And another thing is a pair of chocks for your wheels. When you go to a campground, before you jack up your rig, you should probably chalk your front wheel or, or your rear wheels. And that way there you're not moving around so much. And these are just a pair of cheapos. I do fully intend on getting a better pair. And, uh, but you can get these at any camping store. But blocks and chalks you definitely want to have. So the next item is, it's up to you, I believe it's essential. When I bought my rig, I had the sunscreens that are, that are put on internally in, from the inside. They came with my rig. But I didn't like them. I felt they were a little bit cumbersome. They were kind of a pain in the tail to put in. So I went out and I bought this. And this works great. It's very easy to install. It's not very expensive. Readily available on Amazon. And uh, worth, worth getting. And I consider it an essential item. But you could probably get these anywhere. So it is worth having because it blocks out all the, all the light. And it will also keep down the heat if you're in a hot environment or a warm environment. So I think that's it for the outside. So let's go inside. Some other items I really consider essential are tools. And I think you should always have a minimum of a couple items on board. A drill with some fittings uh, such as your Phillips head and, and whatnot along with uh, other items such as a tire inflator because you have to keep an eye on your tires. And another thing is get yourself like a multi-tool kit, like a, a socket wrench set with uh, some pliers and, and screwdrivers, things of that nature. And you can buy those at any hardware store. They come in a kit and you can get that. What I like to use, I like rigid tools because the batteries work with all the items. So for instance, this is a rigid fl flashlight. Now I don't have the battery in it right now, but this flashlight works with the same battery as my drill, as my um, tire inflator and things of that nature. So you can go with rigid, Ryobi, Milwaukee, they all have basically the same tools. And another thing I'm going to get very soon is a little um, leaf blower. Uh, they call it a, a shot blower because I've been to campgrounds where I had pine needles all over my roof and, and the slide topper and things like that. And I was able to go up there and sweep it off. But you have that blower that will work on the same battery as the flashlight. And you just go up there and blow everything off. It really makes, a, makes it a lot easier. So tools are an essential item that you're going to want when you get your RV. The next thing you're gonna need is your cookware. And when I say cookware, I'm talking your cooking appliances, such as a good everyday pan, a, um, a pot to boil or cook rice or things like that in. You're gonna need spatulas. You're going to need some flatware or silverware as we like to call it. You're probably going to need a can opener and you will definitely need bowls and plates. Now these plates, I get plastic and between each one, I put this uh, non-slip little pad between each plate because when you're going down the road, you don't want everything rattling. But I also have bowls and I have, you know, the pan or the uh, little little pot to boil stuff in and uh, little plates so you're gonna you're gonna need stuff like that too and if you look here I also have a toaster 
I have a couple coffee cups and, um, you know, things of that nature. I have my glasses for having a beer. But you're going to need that. What I consider very essential is a coffee machine. And this is my Keurig one serve K cup. And it works great. It works great and I love it. And it stores away easily. Everything is stored right on board. You pull this out and there's some K cups. So you're going to need stuff of that nature. And what I also keep along with me is paper plates. I do have a stack of paper plates in there. Then the next items are going to be your toiletries. Don't forget, you're going to need some towels, soap, stuff like that. Whatever it is you need in your toiletry area, you're going to need along with toilet paper. So I'm not going to show you all that. That's all in the bath area. But these are items you're going to need and, and you need to consider them because when you spend your first night on the RV, you're going to want something in there. The last item that I really think you need to consider as an essential item is bedding. Now my bed right now, the slide is in, so my bed is folded. But what I did is before I flew out of Boston to go down to Florida to pick up my rig, I bought a couple sets of sheets. I researched what size I would need. I bought a couple sets and I washed them at home and pack them into my suitcase so I could bring them down. And then once I got my rig, I went out and got some uh, bedding such as a comforter or a blanket. And that was easy enough to get at like Walmart or something like that. And it worked out great. So my first night that I had my rig, I was able to sleep on it very comfortably. The only thing I did not have on board was food. But I had bedding, I had some toiletry stuff, I had, uh, I went out the next day, I bought pans, and you definitely want to have the essential items like the water hoses, the surge protector, your, your um, sewer line, and things of that nature. And then you also want to have the stuff that's going to make you comfortable inside so that you can sleep here. And you know, for some folks, bedding Bedding might just be a sleeping bag. That will work too. But I just wanted to give you a heads up on what I consider to be essential items that you're going to need when you buy your rig. And this is just a very basic thing, a very basic list, because certainly there is a lot more you're going to need once you start using the rig. You're going to need cleaning supplies. You're going to need food. You're going to need... Um, you know, towels, little hand towels for the for the kitchen area. You're going to need paper towels. You know, and so you're, that's all personal stuff. That's a personal list. But when it comes down to actually having stuff on the rig, the items that I listed off, I think, are what you're really going to find you do need. So that's it for Chippers Island Adventures. And uh, if you like this video, once again, feel free to subscribe. Hit that like button and continue watching my videos. I hope you enjoy them and all the best to all and happy RVing.